Hey guys, welcome back to the Rock Rockford Ordinance. Today we are out at the range and we've got a little lesson today, a little school day, I guess. And we are comparing Yugo rifles, uh, Serbian that is. And we've got some from a couple different time periods, maybe some before you guys got into the AK platform and the latest and greatest. So let's start with the latest. We're going to compare our ZPAP. This has our flame maple. Had a couple questions as to how this thing was wearing in and how it was shooting. So I thought we'd bring it out today. And yes, it's wearing a Romanian stock, but, or a sling, but that's okay. We've got an original Yugo sling on this baby. This came from Century Arms, oh, 15 years ago or so. This is an AB2, M70 AB2. The uh, Century built them, well, kind of, they subbed them out. They were kit guns, and uh, Century's designation was the M70 AB2. Not to be confused with uh, Zestava's version, but uh, it was true to form, uh, under folder, grenade launcher, all that good stuff. And this is probably the second oldest gun in my collection. We've shot it a lot, it's holding up great, and we're gonna show it to you, show you how it shoots, and compare and contrast. Last but not least, we have the infamous NPAP. Now this one's a little tacked out, right? But kind of been our go-to, probably has more rounds through it than any other AK platform uh, in our collection, uh, but it just shoots great. And we're gonna show you the honest to God wear on this thing. No. Contrary to popular belief, the receiver has not cracked and it's not fallen apart and uh, it's pretty damn accurate actually. Just shot some of our reloads through it here, put a few rounds down range and we're going to continue to do so. We're going to shoot some Tula through it too just to kind of compare them on an even scale. And uh, then we'll go back to the shop, we'll tear these things apart, we'll show you the wear and tear on them if any and uh, kind of go through them tell you what's cool about them, what's unique, what uh, how things have changed over the years, if any. And uh, it'll be kind of interesting. Uh, maybe some of you guys haven't seen some of the older stuff from Zestava. And when I say older, it's, you know, oh, 10 to 20 years, let's say. But that's uh, going to be fun. Come on along. We're shooting at 200 today, so take a few shots and see how the groups work out. Got the three power on the one, and we're shooting irons on the other. So we'll see how I do. Guys, I'm sorry about the train in the background, but we are going to shoot a five-shot group here and see how the old NPAP does. 123 grain Tula, three power primary arms. We're going to settle in here and see how she goes. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to take my time here. All right, I think we're ready. Let's see what we can do. mess. All right, Tula through the end path.
All right, we'll go take a look at that. Nice thing about the end pap, you can lock back the bolt if you're at the range. All right, so this is kind of typical at 200 yards with uh, Tula ammo and three power prism. Not bad, not great. We'll show them to you when we get back at the shop. But uh, now we're gonna shoot the old trusty underfolder iron sights. Bet you didn't know a Bic lighter makes a great chamber flag. But uh, let's see where we got the sights here. Move them up to 200 meters. And let's see how we can do. I don't know. Kind of far from my eyes. The front post is as big as the target. Jerk that last one, but we'll see. God, such a beautiful rifle. All right, that was an impressive group out of the M70 AB2. Um, at least with iron sights, I think you guys will be uh, kind of, I don't know if you'll be impressed, but it, it was pretty good when I show it to you back at the shop. So last but not least is our new end cap. And again, we are running iron sights on it. We're going to set her up at 200 meters here. Five rounds of Tula. And uh, see how she goes. I don't know if it's not broken or what, but this bolt just sounded clackety clack compared to the other guns. Maybe they're just broken in a lot more. I don't know. Well, we're going to go take a look at that, but first, got a little surprise for you. We're going to fire three round groups with some of our reloads from the Bi-39 project. And these came about from some ideas that Fred had given me originally. These are Nossler Varmageddon, uh, 310 diameter, and uh, about 125 grain, uh, CFE black uh, powder. And we'll shoot a three round group out of this on another target and see how it does. See if it's any better than the Tula. <sighs> Some reason this gun just didn't feel as good as the others. I don't know why. I can't really put my finger on it. We'll give it some thought on the way home and I'll let you know. All right, second target, Barmageddon. I'll take a look at that and we got one more gun to run some Varmageddon through and uh, we'll be back at the shop. NPAP also has the uh, safety that you can lock the bolt open with. Oops, see how that works? 
Gotta be careful with it, guys. All right. Okay, this is a second round with our ZPAP because we were way right with the iron sights. So they, they barely caught the paper out there. So on the right side. So although two were on one with our reloads and pretty impressive, like half them away. Um, but I adjusted them just because why not? We have to, right? Um, they were probably fairly close at 100, but at 200 they're not, so might as well get them a little more accurate. We used our trusty set adjusting tool, and we'll see if we can pull out a decent auto load. Pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, try a couple more of our reloads here. Although that first group was really impressive, I should stick with that one. Well, we're going to go see how we did. And then we'll see you back at the shop. Well, it smacked it, just didn't set it off. I bet we run it through again, and it's just fine. Typical Tula. All right, it's been a great day. We're gonna get back to the shop and uh, run through these rifles and I guess we'll clean them and run through them, show you all the wear, if any. Some have more than others, but you'll see it. All right, guys and gals, we are back from the range, and we're going to tear into these rifles and just show you how they're wearing, um, how well they're doing, just in general how they look. We've got three Yugoslavian, Serbian, Zastava uh, rifles all at different stages of use with different round counts in some cases substantially different so it'll be kind of cool to take a look and pay attention as to what you see on each of these um, as far as when i got these rifles this was probably this was second in the zestava line that i bought um, first being the m70 ab2 the uh, under folder you saw this was purchased because they were really inexpensive at the time, the NPAP, and I wanted a gun that I could fit to me and that could be that be-all, do-all, 
uh, training, go to the range gun, not worry about it because things were getting very collectible, vepers, things like the things I'd rather shoot, but really didn't want to tear up, so to speak. So this was the gun that uh, has the most round count. Um, as far as YouTube is concerned, please don't consider this modifying or anything. We are simply tearing it down uh, to, first of all, wipe it down, clean it, and show any wear on the gun what folks should look for or what's not good if you see it and what to watch for on their gun to keep it safe. So um, we're going to take a quick look here uh, under the hood and see how things are looking. And make sure the gun is unloaded and clear. We just had the mag in there for looks. This does happen to be one of the USA um, bolt hold open mags that Zestava supplied with the new Z-Paps. They have the USA floor plate and stuff um, so that they can keep the factory trigger. But uh, yes, it is in fact unloaded. Uh, I'm not going to tear everything down. I did an AK cleaning video just the other week. So if you want to go take a look at that, uh, you can see how to properly clean up. But we're just going to jump in here and see how things have held up. Um, I guess maybe I'll tell you a little bit. We probably have somewhere between, oh, eight and 10,000 rounds, and that's being conservative. I'd rather tell you under than over. Yeah, about five or 6,000, I stopped kind of keeping count, just a mental note kind of thing. And uh, somewhere around <coughs> three or 4,000 rounds, <coughs> we replaced the stock Zestava spring uh, with an ALG spring. That was around the time when um, I think it was Rob Ski had a receiver crack and some other things. Uh, we have had no issues with it. Um, the receiver is held up magnificently. The finish on these is a blued finish. It's held up magnificently. No rust, nothing like that. This gun has been painted with a Krylon job a couple times, and uh, every part you see on here was painted, and of course it's um, perfectly blue, no scratches, the paint didn't affect it in any way. We took it off with stripper, and uh, it's still looking really, really good. Um, how does it shoot? It shoots magnificent. Um, I haven't noticed any degradation in group size. Um, if there is any degradation, it's due to the shooter, um, not the rifle. I, my, my group size has opened up a bit over the last few years. Um, I'm hoping we've remedied that with a trip to the optometrist and some custom shooting glasses that we'll have pretty soon here and uh, maybe our group sizes will tighten up a bit. Um, NPAP, difference between that and the ZPAP most of you probably have is no bulge trunnions, still has the uh, same barrel profile. Uh, it's a heavy barrel, but just missing the bulge trunnions. Um, other than that, pretty much same gun. Uh, so the top covers are still thick like the ZPAP, uh, OPAP, M70, AB2, they all had the heavy uh, dust covers. And to me, it just makes the gun sound, feel a lot more stout than, oh, some of its competitors. Here you will see the ALG spring. If you see the coil in the center there, that's supposed to change, change the residence of the spring, but, uh, this spring is a lot stouter. You can feel it when you rack the gun. Um, it just changes it completely. Not in a bad way at all. Um, I don't know if it's protected it more or not. I've never had a problem with the other springs and uh, to tell you the truth, I really don't know if it's helped, but it, it can't harm it. It's uh, some insurance, let's just say. Um, taking the spring out, the spring looks fine, everything's good there. Bolt carrier, it is the same style bolt carrier that you find on the Z-Paps, um, O-Paps, all of them. 
unfinished and we haven't touched this since the range trip so there's just a little um, carbon on there but the head of the piston has held up incredibly well um, most of the carbon and all just wipes away there's no wear no damage no chips um, got a good bit of wobble to it and that's fine no problem there let's take the bolt out here and I'll get you some close-ups here so you can see let's look at the carrier first get up close here so you guys can see um, let's look at the important part after I wipe a little of this dirt out of there so you can see now we keep our guns lubed very well and uh, cleaned very well I'm not one of these guys that runs it for five or ten thousand rounds and not cleans it but you can see the cam groove here everything looks pretty good in there nowhere um, as far as where the carrier goes over the trigger and all nowhere there grooves are all looking great um, the tail let's see there's a little bit of spread to it not really a mushrooming but uh, it's held up magnificently now we'll get into why I think that is because these were kind of famous for for mushrooming probably worse than any of the other Yugos out there and that's because these guns came with Tapco G2, uh, G3 triggers and the triggers were harder than the factory carrier so when they would hit that trigger they would end up mushrooming most of them stopped after a little while they settled in and that was that I have seen a couple over the years that really got uh, mashed down pretty good but uh, all in all not bad so the carrier is in great shape and this thing's got a boatload of rounds in it um, the bolt itself let's take a look at the lugs here I don't see any deformation um, it is well worn in well rounded there is a little movement of metal so let me see what side that's on well okay, just a hair so uh, as the bolt comes forward and locks in it has moved a little bit of metal on the one lug right here on the edge and just where it locks in and just barely I can catch my finger in it I don't see any other movement um, no issues whatsoever a little bit here but again it's just wearing in you know AKs are meant to wear into each other and they definitely have I mean I can feel a little lip here um, right off the front where it rounds over on it but that's just normal movement um, firing pin is original and looks great um, the tip of it's not mushroomed I don't see anything taken out of it extractor looks great I'll show you an up close here see what you think it's still nice and sharp um, the extractor that is I have no issues with it um, I don't see any real mushrooming over of the firing pin or anything and uh, just in really good shape yeah now one of these it's either my M70 AB2 or this one um, the pins that hold the extractor um, as well as the firing pin in one of them is uh, I think somebody put it together wrong did something weird I cannot drive that pin out it's gonna have to be drilled out at some point if I ever need to get that firing pin out of there it just won't come out I think it might be this one when we tear that M70 down we'll take a look and see but yeah the bolt is in great shape rear trunnion there are there is a little wear in the back here I should say not wear but uh, the bluing has shows some rub marks or 
where maybe it's touched the back a couple times, but nothing more than finish wear. Up front, uh, things are worn, but certainly not worn out or deformed. Uh, the rails are certainly smoothed out on top. Um, and I told you I'd tell you about the um, the wear, why I think there's so little wear on this tail. And that's because we had replaced the uh, TAPCO G2 uh, trigger uh, with an ALG. And this was the only gun when we put an ALG in it that we had to uh, really modify. We had to modify the hook. The way it was, it stuck up so high that when the carrier came back, it locked the carrier. The carrier couldn't go back. So we had to bring that hook down uh, quite a bit, round it over so the carrier could get by. And uh, at first I was a bit worried about it because it left it, well, there's still a lot of meat there. But anytime, you know, you take some meat off something you worry about it but it is held up for several more thousand rounds um, this ALG works great in this gun all the springs uh, as far as the fire control group have uh, held up well let's show you the front trunnion in here hopefully you guys can see in there um, everything although it has some nice wear patterns um, wearing into the carrier the bolt etc everything's great underneath um, again just what you'd want to see is it wears in no uh, issues whatsoever um, let's see I don't know if I should take the fire control group out of this one and show you guys or take it out of that um, M70 AB2 uh, because this has the ALG so you know I don't know how many of you would be interested or not if you are let me know in the comments and we'll do a separate video on it but that being said everything is held up fine um, gas blocks these these gas blocks I, I know there was an issue on a ZPAP I read somewhere but uh, these pieces are so well done. The bluing so beautiful. Um, front sight um, block is held up well. Um, the gun isn't gassed too bad and it, it runs just really, really well. Um, can't say enough about it. The rivets have all held up really well. They're well formed. Uh, nothing has come loose. I don't see any gaps, nothing misshapen, uh, just really done remarkable. The firing pin, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, hammer and uh, trigger pins have not ovaled out at all. I know people heard that in back in the day. I don't know if they're still hearing it, but let's show you these rivets. Very well formed, nothing moving. Uh, here's the back of the uh, trunnion. This is where Rob Ski had developed some cracks um, in between here. It is, there's not much metal in between, but it's, it's held up fine. Everything's looking good there. Go to the other side. The uh, side mount has stayed nice and tight and uh, no issues there either. Um, just covering up the serial number, that's all. But uh, all the rivets look great. So, uh, as far as the rifling, um, I haven't used a bore scope on it, but uh, it looks good. And uh, the crown is, is fine. It's just held up exceptionally well. And this is a very high round count gun. Like I said, between eight and 10,000 rounds solid. I'm probably diminishing it there. It's probably a bit more, but it's just really done well. Um, we run a TDI, TDI Arms, 4N, Kyber Customs, Cheese Grater, BD2, 
on the muzzle brake. Um, run this almost since new. Love it. It really softens things up. And uh, rifle dynamics. Um, um, buffer tube uh, adapter and a fab defense core stock that works really well on this with the cheek riser. Uh, we get a perfect sight picture with our primary arms 3x uh, prism scope and of course a Magpul K-grip. Uh, yeah, I couldn't ask for more. We do run sling silencers on here and we do a little bit of a uh, Cobra stitch on here. It uh, doesn't really make them any stronger, but just looks a little better than just the loops and seems to snag less just than the thin loops by themselves. So uh, that's about it, guys, on the NPAP. So hope most of you understand the difference. This is basically when the ZPAP, the first gen, came out, this was the gun right here. It didn't have bulge, bulge trunnions and it didn't have a chrome line barrel just like this. This is non-chrome lined and a straight receiver. This is how the ZPAP first came out. It wasn't until that second generation that they added the bulge trunnions, the chrome line barrel, all of that good stuff. So essentially this is an identical gun to the early ZPAP. And if that tells you anything, it's held up really well. People will say, well, these were for commercial markets and this and that, and they don't hold up as well as the military guns. Guys, they're built on the same line, the same parts, the same everything. Um, I've got it on good authority and uh, someone that has a friend working at the plant. So uh, that's our NPAP. We'll slide this thing back together here real quick and we will get you let's see what should we go on to i guess we'll go on to the m70 ab2 because that has the second most rounds through it and uh, we'll show you that but if this is any indication of how these have held up well then uh, it should be just fine uh, I hope nobody in the comments or something starts with, oh, well, that gun doesn't look like it's got that kind of round count through it and all. Well, it does. And if you look at my channel, guys, this gun has been featured in so many videos and so many reviews and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's been around forever. And uh, I don't know if you add up all the shots just in the video. God only knows how many. But uh, let me grab that M70 AB2 and we'll take a look at that. All right, here she is, the one that started it all. Well, I shouldn't say started all, the or Wasser did, but this was uh, the second AK variant we bought oh, 15, 17 years ago, something like that. I remember seeing it in the shop and thinking, God, that thing is so neat. And uh, my wife bought it for me for Valentine's Day. Um, let's unfold the stock here and then uh, check it and clear it. Nothing in the mag. I want to tell you a little bit about that mag and it is clear. Let's start with the mag here. So this is what you can expect out of the old um, true M70 bolt hold open mags. They were originally blued, unlike what you see today, the painted ones. These had a beautiful blue finish. I have gotten some of the old ones where uh, they've been painted, stuff like that, but um, the original ones were blued. And this, while this has a nice blue finish, um, I've seen some nicer, certainly in better condition. Um, there is a little trench art or something on here. Somebody has carved some initials in here. Uh, I can't really tell what it says. It says something that looks like Dan or D-A-H, Da, I don't know, something. But uh, yeah, beautiful bluing, um, just like all the early M70s had. Um, just awesome. 
So, uh, this gun came into the country as a kit. And M70, or M70, my gosh. And Century Arms was putting these together and marketing them as the M70 AB2. The good news was that Century subbed these guns out to um, subcontractors. There were several um, well-known and maybe some not so well-known well known, uh, AK makers that were putting these together for them. And uh, most came out really nice, as did this one. Um, they blued them and uh, originally came with black polymer hand guards. We've put the original wood on and they had that ugly square um, century polymer grip. We've originally uh, put the original one on and an original um, Yugoslavian sling. We've also put uh, some Cobra Stitch uh, paracord over the stock rails just so it's a little more comfy on our cheek and uh, I'll tell you this if you put it on both sides like this it binds up your safety so uh, we'll probably end up cutting this off but on the on the right side but on the left side it works out really really well looks good is not too intrusive and without it on the right side you can still manipulate the safety just fine but uh, it's held up. It's been on there for years and years and years. And just makes it a little more comfy. Uh, the wood is finished with um, boiled linseed oil. And really gives the beach a nice uh, original look. Same um, bolt in the white. However, now unlike the end pap, uh, we're looking at a bulge trunnion. And... Uh, you know, the grenade launcher and everything that was cool about these uh, flip up night sights with tritium, vi uh, tritium vials. They don't work anymore. Um, there is a company out there making ones that you can recharge. And here's the flip up front night sight also that would have had an original tritium vial in it. And just a cool gun. Came with the slant brake and all. And this is exactly how this gun came out of the factory. Notice no side rail on it. Um, you could run a master mount or something like that. Um, or you could switch out the gas tube and mount something up there or get some uh, mount that goes where the site is. But I've kept this gun just like it was and you're gonna see from our um, measuring of our groups just how well this rifle did. Now, being as it was my second uh, gun, it's had a lot of rounds through it, but not as many as the NPAP. Um, if I had a guess, I'd say 4,000, maybe 5,000, somewhere in there. Um, it had a lot more rounds through it with the stock spring. Uh, before I switched it out because we had this long before the end pap when I decided to switch to the ALG Springs, but uh, Yeah, more rounds to it before that uh, so again No issues with The receiver, but then again, it is a bulge trunnion gun Let's pull the bolt carrier out and we'll take a look at that uh, Take the bolt out of here. And we had cleaned this before we went to the range the other day. So it's not dirty at all. And wipes pretty clean. Um, about the same amount of wobble, maybe a little more than the other one, which again is fine. Uh, head of the piston, still looking great. No grooves really or anything. Um, might be a few up in the toward the head but that's just from years of use you can see a little more wear in the cam groove on this for whatever reason um, keep in mind 
these were military parts kits. So these had miles on them before Century um, did them. So there's the inside of the cam groove. But it just shows you, this being military parts, um, these guns wear exceptionally well. Uh, where it slides over the hammer and tail wear. This actually has more than the end pap. Um, and it did have more of a, uh, a hook of metal coming off, but when it got to be very noticeable, just kind of dremeled it off of there and it hasn't moved since. Here's the tail on that. Again, military gun and then put back together by Sentry and still looking good. Now, as a military gun, it would have ran with the stock um, fire control group. This gun still has its TAPCO uh, G2 in it, but there's been some changes, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it at this angle, but I think we'll take the fire control group out of this one and show you, because there was always word of undersized pins in these and them egging out the um, receiver, and that just hasn't happened on this. This is... Although I hate G2 triggers, right? But I gotta say, I had forgotten how good this was. I hadn't shot it in a while. And uh, when you look at most com block uh, hammers, there's not that usual big hump in them that American triggers have. Uh, and really, the difference is because of the full auto. But uh, this I gave more of a stock fire control group profile we we brought that hump down and got this thing there's no wall you'll never hit a wall with this trigger it just pulls and boom it's gone and it's like glass um, super smooth surprises you which makes for good accuracy uh, if you look there's less wear on the trunnions more wear on the upper receiver. Uh, these were made, I believe, if I remember right, uh, Nodex Bud receivers, uh, and they're stamped DC Industries. But uh, yeah, let's look at the top rails of the receiver there. All the bullings worn off. Um, if you can see the trenions in there, they look just fine. There's not much. Let's see if I can get some light in there for you. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but um, definitely some wear here. But this gun is by far one of the smoothest uh, AKs in my collection. Um, it's as smooth as a uh, milled gun, for sure. It's, it's just amazing how smooth, quiet, just, oh man. I love it, absolutely love it. Underneath, um, trunnions look okay. Everything's good. Um, in the back, uh, no marks of it hitting the back here at all. And uh, this G2 has held up exceptionally well. Um, the stock, let's talk about that. So very very little movement side to side nothing tight just a little bit and if yours is loose um, try tightening it up first there's a nut under here that can be tightened up and uh, that can really really help if you've got one that's a little bit loose anyhow Let's pull the fire control group out of this one and uh, take a look at this G2, shall we? Um, first of all, we are going to get our trusty shotgun shell out. And if you guys haven't seen this, I'll show you an easy way to take out your fire control group. So 
first for cleaning. So first of all, we're going to hook the uh, hammer springs here. I'm gonna put it down. We're gonna hook the hammer springs and wrap them around the hammer uh, to hold them up and out of the way. There's a reason they call these uh, cobra fangs because if they let go and hit you in the hand, they can hurt and poke a little hole in you just like cobra fangs could. But basically what we're gonna do is wrap the spring, spring legs around the hammer. Then we're gonna take a 12 gauge empty shotgun shell, flatten it out a little bit and then put it over the spring legs and shove it down over the hammer. So it's like that. Now they can't hurt you, can't bite you. Uh, from there, we'll take the safety out and uh, then we can take our pins out. After we take our plate. We did get rid of the uh, paper clip and went to a pin retaining plate. Just easier for cleaning and uh, we will push the, this isn't meant to be instructional, sorry, I'm just doing it so I can put it on the bench. It's just meant to take it out uh, to show you guys the wear. So, we lift out our G2 group all in one piece here and then push out the hammer pin like so and twist, oops, my shotgun shell is falling off there. Pull out our hammer group with the legs captured and we're all good. So now you can see inside the receiver um, everything's looking good. Some wear on the top rails, that's normal, but smooth as glass, and that's what makes this gun smooth. If I look at the pinholes here, um, no egging whatsoever. Take a look there. If you guys see something I'm not seeing, but I don't see any egging of those holes. They look just fine. And again, higher round count. So let's put the gun down for a minute and show you on this G2 group. So here's your hammer. And the nice thing with the G2s, the only nice thing in my opinion, is that the uh, disconnect is captured right uh, so you don't have to worry about pushing down with the spring and putting the pin through there's a tube there that holds everything together and uh, still looks pretty good uh, the bluings held up real well here um, however on the hammer let me release these legs so we don't uh, you don't hear me yelling and screaming when they let loose and sting me. All right. So normally the profile on a G2 has got a high hump, and you'll see just how low we took that. Right? Normally it probably came up that much higher. I mean, quite a bit. Um, it racks easier. Um, it's much smoother. It doesn't, that classic uh, where it's coming forward, if you manually cycle it and it'll hold in the back position, that doesn't happen anymore. And that works just great. It looks almost duplicate to a Romanian trigger, uh, but Hugo's pretty much the same. So took it down and polished it real nice. And this thing is just glass. It's worn well. Um, I wish I could just show you guys how well it works. The trigger pins show 
some of the wear that this gun truly does have. You can see um, they have worn quite a bit. But uh, everything else is just uh, great. Got the full auto safety. Some guys have problems taking these out. I don't know. I never have a problem with them. Um, everything looks just great. I want to see if this, yeah, this was the bolt with the pins that are an issue. Can't get this pin out to save my life. Beat the crap out of it, still doesn't come out. A little bit of wear here from rotational wear, it looks like. But again, nothing major. Man, this bolt is worn in just like glass. There's nothing rough. There is one line here that looks worn in, but again, it's all superficial stuff that doesn't really matter at all. Um, the, the face of the ejector looked a little weird, but that's just uh, dirt. Uh, firing pin looks fine, no problem. Yeah, everything just looks great on this thing. Uh, Misha did bring up the fact that these aren't quite in the white, that there is some type of coating on the carriers in these bolts. I don't know what it is, um, but I've heard him talk about it. I don't know if you can see this wear here. Just a little bit, you can see how the like polishing or grain changes a little bit there. But uh, that's it. Everything is in great shape. There is some wear here from wearing as it goes into the gas tube and uh, uh, sight block. Bit of scoring on the piston here. But again, military parts. Uh, so they had uh, miles on it from the get-go. Um, tail is fine, like I said, even with that G2, but the reason it doesn't have the typical mushrooming is we got rid of the issue here. It's not meeting as a direct on hit, you know, because these are harder than that carrier. But when we reduced them, yes, the hardness is still there, but it's hitting at more of an angle and not causing the problem. Um, you guys can see TAPCO and that was one of the US parts that had to come in it for 922R. Um, original hammer spring, um, the only spring that was changed was the ALG. So that's held up really well. Um, part of the reason I wanted to go through these and show them to you guys is because of some of the uh, reports about the NPAP out there on the internet that frankly I was a bit oblivious to. I had not heard any issues with them and all of a sudden uh, I went back to some old haunts on the internet and started hearing about all these issues. I mean from uh, a carrier breaking to um, I think there was a gas block and uh, rivets and all kinds of things and guys just saying, well, uh, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a Stava and they're a civilian gun maker and this and that, which is the furthest thing from the truth. And they're saying, well, they're commercial guns, they're not military grade. That's not true either. Um, yes, they're meant for the commercial market. But they don't change it, guys. It would cost them more to change what they're building than to make a civilian-only model. Now, I'll grant you that the chrome line barrels were not what they were producing. And that was done for the American market, period. Um, but that being said, I found it, I'm not saying the guys are lying. I saw pictures of some of the stuff. But I find it very hard to believe that quality has dropped on these rifles. Now, this rifle has become incredibly popular. Um, 
you know, there's not a ton out there right now. And Zestava, thank the Lord, has kept the supply coming on these. So they should be commended for that. Now, with that, what I think is a monstrous increase in how many they're selling, could quality have dropped? Could COVID have caused, you know, workforce changes, this and that, and some hiccups? Maybe. But I look at this gun and I look at the rivets, uh, and I'm comparing it here to two other guns uh, that came out of the same plant at different time periods, different years, um, substantially different years. And the rivets all look great, tight, well formed, um, no issues. I'd be uh, proud to show these to anybody and I'll show them to you. Uh, they all look great, they're all tight. Now this gun does not have a ton of rounds at all through it. I mean, maybe a thousand or a little over. Let's show you the other side here. Uh, I'm just going to cover up the serial number here, but uh, yeah, rivets are all tight, well formed, everything's looking good, no problems. Beautiful Tiger Maple um, handguard and gas tube cover. Um, the back, after I put the oil finish on, ended up being a little darker than the front, but that's because it doesn't have as much striping in it. Um, there's just barely a little, so it took the oil different. I wish I had one that matched a little better, but that would be my only complaint on this. And frankly, uh, I don't know that these were all came out as being tiger uh, maple as they just were maple. So I just happened to see this one and grabbed it. We've got a Romanian sling on here. I like Romanian slings and I didn't have a Yugo one handy. But uh, for the little bit of rounds, I don't expect to see anything out of whack here, but let's take it apart real quick and take a look. All right, so same top cover, heavy top cover. Um, let's see. No. Nope. Same thickness. Here's an early original off the under folder. Here's the Z-PAP. Uh, no difference whatsoever. Little wear on the early M70 up here inside. None on here. But absolutely identical material wise stamping wise quality wise and bluing as well if anything the bluing might be a little nicer on the z-pap now this has the factory spring in it uh, and i have not replaced it um, we're keeping it the same will i replace it probably not Ah, no marks on the rear trunnion. Uh, now, uh, many of you probably know that Zestava, in order to keep a factory Yugoslavian trigger group here, changed out other parts for 922R, such as the floor plate of the magazine, uh, the follower, etc. And those floor plates are stamped USA. I had one here somewhere. Here. So here's the mag. The floor plate is stamped USA and the followers are different. If you look at the bolt hold open follower in there, it looks like a piece of metal rod. If you can see that, looks just like a piece of metal rod that is underneath the stamping of the follower. And here is an original bolt hold open. Uh, there's no metal rod in there. It's just formed as part of the stamping. Anyhow, let's pull the carrier and uh, bolt out. I'm going to look at the trunnions real quick. And again, um, the bluing is barely worn off the top here. Nowhere at all. Barely starting on the front trunnion. Um, 
bluing is off the hammer. Uh, here, so here's a factory Zestava hammer. And yeah, it's low just like the way I did the Tapco. Uh, my Tapco may be a little lower actually. But uh, not much to see here guys, it's so new. Um, a ton of oil in there not much wear like I said not uh, many rounds through this thing let's look at the bolt carrier in comparison uh, same amount of wobble um, no scoring here's the uh, head of that carrier now this had rounds through it you can see but I that oil if you watch my cleaning video man these things just wipe clean and you don't get all that build up look at this look at that i just wiped that carbon off and it looks like i spent hours cleaning that thing that's how good that lucas works once the metal's impregnated with that that's how easy it is to clean your ak i mean incredible that just wiped clean uh granted it wasn't a ton of rounds uh, through it but uh, the bolt is brand new on this guys nothing is moving at all uh, nowhere not even worth showing you guys hardly but uh, nothing's changed over the years guys these things are the same all three guns I don't know how anybody can say well these were built for the commercial market they're the same damn thing. Same parts. I'm looking at three generations. Probably, uh, I don't know how old that kit is, but I'll bet we're talking 1970 all the way to 2022 or more. Um, you know, a 50 year span and these things are identical. There is no difference. There's no commercial versus no cheaper metal or anything like that receivers are the same obviously uh, other than the American made one there um, they're serialized the same way uh, everything 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 this does still have its paper clip mount in there um, yeah really nowhere it's held up great um, and yeah much lower round count but no issues I mean there's just uh, nothing uh, nothing to report back now could there have been a bad earlier batch uh, than this one um, this one was probably from about a year ago or so maybe and I'm not saying that things don't happen but uh, who knows, you know? Uh, you never know how things are treated, what happens to them. Uh, could there be a couple bad ones here and there? Sure. Let's look at the rivets in this gun. Uh, or did we already? Yeah, we did already. Um, yeah, they're great. No issues whatsoever. Um, alignment straight as an arrow as are all these guns i have not had an issue with anything being crooked anything like that um, i do hate these grips they're just round might as well be a broomstick i mean no checkering nothing to, i don't know i don't care for them but uh is what it is you know this is american made wood anyways and uh solid plate and back but it certainly is an improvement to the boat paddle stock that came on that end path oh my god it was horrendous and guess what i think i have it right yes i do holy cow let me show you guys you can paddle a canoe with this one guys and it came with a rubber pad and the mark you see and you're going to see in the stock was uh what I guess Century was the importer then they would have put this wood on but look at that boat paddle boy let me give you next to this one look at the size difference of that thing 
And these were the ones that kicked you in the cheek. And let me tell you, they did. It was so high, you could not get down on the iron sights with this thing unless you were right on that trunnion because it came up so high. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in that. You wonder why there's a fab defense stock on there? Yeah, that's why. Look at that. I'm holding it. There, that's how it would have been in the gun. That's the difference. That's monumental. Wait, hold on. There you go. It's about an inch longer, too. And just, my God. And very light, like balsa wood almost. Um, unlike most AK variants, Romanian, Bulgarian, etc., these just kind of plug in the back, and there's a long bolt that goes through them. The bolt used to come loose on these all the time. Uh, you had to stick a screwdriver through the rubber pad to get those screws off and then there's a long bolt that goes through it uh, and it had a matching hand guard and all uh, but yeah look at the size of that thing you could paddle across the Delaware with this baby anyhow here in comparison to a Romanian stock which is essentially the size that's on the ZPAP today. Anyhow, I wanted to go through the wear and tear on these and show you that. Now, let's show you how these guns grouped and uh, we'll call it quits after that. I'm gonna show you real quick. You might be impressed as to what did what here. Give me a sec, we'll bring it to you. All right, guys. So, I'm sorry this video is running so long, but hey, there you goes. You gotta love them, you gotta talk about them, right? So we took them out to the range and just wanted to kind of compare them. Also wanted to do some shooting with our new reloads, see how they did compared to Tula. So I've got some results here. Um, we shot the main groups with Tula and then I shot some other groups using my reloads to see how they were. A little confusing because I only had two silhouette targets that were big enough to actually see it 200 yards. So put one out there for the Tula, one out for the reloads, shot all three rifles on the same target. And uh, in order to kind of score them and get the MOA, I used orange dots. And for each set, I put them on there, measure, then move the orange dots. So the only set you're gonna see on here is the last one I measured, but I'll read the results to you so you'll get the gist. Um, also, iron sights at 200, little tough. I'm not blaming the guns, I'm blaming my ability. So, it's hard with irons at 200 uh, yards with my eyes. And I'm not what I used to be, but uh, what I noticed was I'd have, uh, I was shooting five shot groups with the Tula. And I'd noticed I'd have, you know, four fairly tight groups for two, uh, four, shots of each group that were fairly tight and then I'd have like one flyer where it wasn't the bullets fault it was I knew I yanked it or I knew that maybe I wasn't lining up the iron sight with the exact spot I did with the rest of the group because I had a break in between or take my head off the gun or whatever so I'm gonna give you the straight score and then I'm gonna give you the MOA taking um, the furthest one out of the five shot group away. So basically a four shot group. Take it for what it's worth, but just know that each one of them in most cases was cut, the MOA was cut in half by taking that one out. So they were substantial. It wasn't like one missed by a little bit or something. It was substantial and it was me doing it, not the gun. I can tell you that in all cases. Um, anyhow, uh, we shot the NPAP first, then we shot the M70 AB2, and then the ZPAP. So I don't know which one these orange dots represent, probably the last one measured, but I had numbered them all as I shot them so I knew what was what. Just to show you we're not, you know, um, making one look better or anything like that. They're all my guns, so I have no reason to, you know, make one look better than the other. But with the Tula, 
the NPAP, um, its total score at 200 yards was 4.25 MOA. If I took, uh, well, I'll go over to f taking the flyer out last. Um, the M70AB2, now keep in mind that NPAP had a 3 by uh, prism scope on it and it shot a 4.25. The M70AB2 with iron sights, I shot a 4.15, so a hair better. The ZPAP shot a 7 MOA at 200 yards. Now, if I take the flyers out, listen to this, it kind of flips around. The ZPAP shot the best with taking one flyer out. It was down to 2.75 MOA. The M70AB2 also shot a 2.75, taking out the uh, one flyer. And both of those guns were iron sights. Now the NPAP taking out one flyer with a three power scope was 3.25. So, you know, the ZPAP cut way down, the M70 cut about in half, and that NPAP went down a little. So take it for what it's worth. Um, let me show you what our reloads did. And again, um, we scored them with the orange dots. There was the last group, there were two right there. Um, and they weren't necessarily sighted in at 200, so it was just groups, not shooting for bullseye or anything like that, but same point of aim every time, just trying to group. So at 200 yards um, with my reloads, let's kind of compare to Tula here, since I'm not putting it on the screen, you guys probably have forgotten the score already. My reloads in the NPAP shot a 4.1, versus Tula at 4.25. Uh, the ZPAP uh, iron sights shot 3.1 MOA with my reloads versus a 7 MOA on the Tula. And the M70AB2 shot 5 MOA with my reloads versus 4.15 on the Tula. So, two got better, one got worse, and, uh, but it gets interesting when we take out the flyer. So, um, my reload's taking out the flyer. The NPAP shot a .65 MOA at 200 yards, so sub MOA at 200 yards. Um, the ZPAP shot a 1.5 MOA, and the M70AB2 shot a 2.5. So compared to the Tula taking the flyer out, NPAP reloads 0.65, Tula uh, 3.25. So a substantial drop from 3.25 MOA down to 0.65. Uh, the M70 AB2 on Tula taking one flyer out was 2.75, and here it was 2.5, so it dropped a little bit on the re with the reloads. And finally, the ZPAP, with my reloads taking a flyer out, shot a 1.5 MOA versus a 2.75 MOA. So, our reloads are finally doing better than standard Tula, and uh, kind of interesting. I know somebody's gonna say, oh, well, you should count the whole group. Well, I did, I gave you those numbers, but, they were substantial, a lot of difference taking one flyer out. And a lot of it was due to the two guns with iron sights. And, um, you know, is what it is, 200 yards. It's a it's, uh, lot tougher than 100 yards. But we've been doing 200 lately. Frankly, I'm bored with 100 and uh, shooting 200 is a lot more fun. And it challenges us better. And when we go back to 100, we'll shoot that much better. I uh, can't wait to get my shooting glasses, which are going to make up for a lot of this, and it'll be a ton of fun. But I'm just looking at these numbers, and that's actually pretty amazing, right? Uh, M70 AB2, that back in the day, everybody said, oh, century junk. And, you know, here it's shooting 2.5 MOA at 200 yards, and uh, it's had a few thousand rounds through it. That NPAP shooting sub MOA with eight to 10,000 rounds through it? Wow. 
and the ZPAP at uh, 1.5 MOA. Uh, all pretty damn good and those two guns on iron sights um, 1.5 on the ZPAP and 2.5 on the M70 AB2 both with iron sights um, I challenge you get out there with iron sights it's a ton of fun you learn a lot and as we progressed you know you got to remember you got to remember all your stuff breathing trigger sight picture all those things and then with the wider posts on these AKs, uh, when I'm shooting distance, I'm usually shooting other rifles or ARs usually when I'm shooting longer distances. And you gotta remember, you can slice that front post up into quarters, you know, to adjust for windage and all kinds of stuff. So get out there, it'll challenge you more, it'll make you a better shooter. Um, you don't have to go to skinny front sight posts. Learn how to quarter that front sight and, uh, you'll do a lot better. After running this, kind of went back to the basics, gave it a little thought and started uh, messing around um, just on shooting some steel and stuff and it was a noticeable better difference. Um, I'm sure if we went back with these same guns now with a little more practice and, and uh, head and shot irons at that distance forever and uh, could definitely do better but uh, pretty interesting and some pretty nice groups even if you take the full groups into consideration um, heck it's uh it's a long way and frankly probably in a real life situation you're not going much over 250 most likely and if you can hit like that with iron sights all shots on target you're doing pretty good the old girl uh really performed as did the ZPAP, as did the NPAP. So I was happy with it. Really, really uh, a good time. Um, I hope this showed you something. I hope it showed uh, everybody that, hey, all of these guns built over the years by Zestava are of military quality. They've been used around the world more than any other AK variant in wartime situations. Uh, they've been in conflicts everywhere and they hold up. That stuff about, well, it's commercial versus military just doesn't hold water. Could a batch of Z-Paps have some more problems than others? Sure, maybe. They're selling those like crazy. They've really up their game as far as numbers coming in. It's popular. There's not as many other um, um, guns out there. So people are buying them and they like them. They're heavy duty. They'll last forever. They're great guns. I'm partial to them because it was one of my first and I just enjoy them. They're great. So get yours out. Get it out to the range. Have fun. Whether you're shooting iron sights, a red dot, or adding some magnification, whatever it is, have a good time and trust that you have a good gun. It's you, the shooter, that's going to make it better. So uh, sorry for the long video, but I'm pretty sure anybody into these Yugos or maybe not enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be bringing you some more videos and some other cool stuff. And I'm sure you'll see more of these Yugos. Let me know in the comments which one you like the best. Uh, what you'd like to shoot. What you have. How your results have been. If you're reloading. Hey, how, what have you come up with? Is it uh, done better or worse? I can tell you it's kind of hard to, to get that round better. Um, at least out of the, the AK platform. Maybe in a bolt action it's easier. I don't know. But uh, hey, we've had fun with it and we're going to continue. And that's about it. Check out uh, the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Check out our Instagram, our Facebook. And uh, Tuesday nights we do a live stream called Coffee and Kalashnikovs. 8 o'clock central um, we send out a notification so make sure you hit subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so you get sent a notification for our Tuesday night live stream it's a lot of fun we talk AKs we talk ARs we talk all kinds of stuff the chat is awesome you can ask questions we talk about what you want to talk about so come on over check it out I'm sure you'll like it it's a cool firearm blog uh, whatever. We talk about everything. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for showing up. And as always, Rockford Ordnance out.